Knicks Nation, today is Thursday. It's the 16th day of November 2023. I hope you're safe and healthy today and that your family is safe and healthy and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field who alongside the first responders are every day saving lives. And those that pick up garbage to keep our streets and cities clean and disease free. And those also that make deliveries for our convenience. Double blessings on the men and women out here trying to help, rescue, and deliver teenagers and children that are the victims of child molestation and pedophilia. People who are also victims of pornography and child pornography, prostitution, child prostitution, human trafficking, and sex slavery. Double curses upon those that are the perpetrators of these heinous industries. Double curses on those that profit from them and double curses on the perverts that create the demand of which other perverts provide the supply. Finally, blessings, double blessings on the homeless. Nearly 600,000 men, women, and children and increasingly more senior citizens homeless in the streets of the United States and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions. Blessings upon them for theirs is the kingdom. There was a basketball game last night in Atlanta. The New York Knicks defeated the Atlanta Hawks 116-114. to 114. I was extremely encouraged by this game. More than just the final score, of course, I, along with every person that is a true Knicks fan, very happy that the Knicks won this basketball game. It is their fourth win in their last five games. The first win they got without R.J. Barrett. Um, but there were some encouraging signs within the game. I understand it's a star-driven league, the NBA. The NBA makes money internationally by promoting stars. And so we're all used to looking at who were the stars of the game. But there was other things going on that I want to mention that I feel is important. Before I get into that, well, I'll get into this after. But first of all, yes, Jalen Brunson, the greatest Knicks signing of a free agent that I can remember. Um, the, the, I can't remember a guy. I mean, Allen Houston was a trade. Um, so was Earl Monroe. But as a free agent signing, I can't think of anybody in, in, in all the years, the 50 plus years I've been following the Knicks, that was a bigger free agent signing, uh, more most effective than Jalen Brunson. Um, he is every bit the assassin we thought it was going to be. We got him about half the price that he really should have cost. And of course, he's doing the job that we all were looking for from a point guard for years and years. So that's given. And he's kind of spoiled me because I'm expecting him to do what he does. Play with a high IQ, uh, score in the paint with footwork that is Hall of Fame level, you know, Kobe Bryant level footwork. And then, of course, but there's other things that really excited me. See, last night, I don't know if you saw it. And part of it is because Knicks Nation hates, a lot of Knicks Nation hates their own coach you know, calling for his firing, which is idiotic in my view, which I always let y'all know. In fact, let me just tell y'all, some of y'all coming on my channel wanting to, to criticize Tom Thibodeau, don't be surprised if you get bumped from the channel, because I'm not having it. After seeing so many David Fisdales and Jeff Hornacek's, uh, you know, on the sidelines for the Knicks, I, I, we finally got a coach, and I'm not having all of this crap from, from y'all about him. So, but last night was a game of adjustments. OK, it was because one of the things about a true rivalry in the NBA is the rivalry is just not only on the court. It goes into the film session. It goes into the coaching staff and you start to see adjustments. So last night, for example, Jalen Brunson, every player has their kryptonite. DeJounte Murray is Jalen Brunson's kryptonite. So they started off the game with DeJounte Murray guarding Jalen Brunson. The Knicks countered by having Quentin Grimes guard the leprechaun. Okay. And so they were making their plays based on these type of adjustments and these type of moves. The only constant that they could not account for, and so far nobody has been able to account for, is Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson has become a monster. And that's why I'd say he's the most important piece going forward for the Knicks. They can make adjustments for Brunson. They can make adjustments for Julius. They can't make adjustments for Mitchell Robinson. Okay, when he's on and Julius decides to play like he did last night, the Knicks are very formidable. Very formidable. 
The depth of the Knicks also helped last night, as you saw. No RJ, and then Grimes gets hurt. But we'll talk about that in a second. But the adjustments. So one, the biggest adjustment I saw was Randall. And this, if you know, if you if you follow Randall since he's come to the Knicks, the first year with the Knicks, you remember he didn't trust anybody with the basketball except himself, and he was turning it over a lot. His second year with the Knicks under Thibodeau, he started to trust the backcourt. He trusted Bullock and he trusted EP. And Bullock and EP, of course, we know had their limitations, but they had Julius's trust, and Julius had their trust. Now. What I saw last night at crunch time, the Hawks made a big mistake. Okay, and, and this is, uh, that's what I'm saying. Quentin Snyder is a great coach, but he made a mistake last night. See, everybody wants to harp on Tom Thibodeau, you know, when he makes mistakes. Let me explain something to you. Every coach in the NBA makes bad decisions. Every single one. The most winning to the most losing. Okay? The question is, can you recover from it? Okay? So, Quinn Snyder made the mistake in the fourth quarter of having the leprechaun guarding Emmanuel quickly. Now, in previous seasons, guys like Randall, who get a lot of touches, wouldn't have recognized this. But Randall was actively calling for quickly to come get the basketball. This is what Brunson on the court, if you notice. He was looking for quickly because he knew that quickly had the mismatch. Quickly, what we would call in the street, Quickly had the fish. So not only did this help the Knicks in terms of helping them win this basketball game, because Quickly was huge down the stretch, especially with the free throw, but it helped Quickly, who had a bad game against Boston because they were keying on him, help Quickly get untracked. And he did. And it was Julius looking for him. Also, I think, now I'm not a doctor. Um, but I've seen this type of situation happen before, most recently prior to this with Mitchell Robinson. I think Grimes might have broken his his left hand. And that's unfortunate because they were really looking for him. He played 29 minutes last night and he got 11 shots. Now, if you don't know the Knicks, that doesn't mean anything to you. But Grimes has been averaging about six shots a game this season. Last night he had 11. Now, part of that was a response an adjustment response by the Knicks. Again, Randall and, and Brunson looking for him. And so he had 11 shots last night. Uh, he was four of 11 from the field. He was three of eight from three. He had three turnovers. And the reason, because he had the ball more in his hand than he normally would. And that would have bode well going forward. I don't know how long a broken hand will keep him out. If we saw when Mitch Robb broke his, his hand, um, he was out pretty much the rest of that season. But then again, that happened in the second half of the season. I'm hoping it's not like that with q But he, he left the game. And, and when I knew it was serious is he was on the court. I saw the play where, he, where the hand got broke or at least it got bruised. He went right to the locker room. Quick as a Q-Dog's a tough dude. And he went right to the locker room. He didn't even go to the sideline. He didn't wait for somebody to look at. He went right to the locker room. And he was holding his arm very funny. I don't know if it was. The way he was holding his arm it looked like a separated shoulder. But but then they said it was a bruised hand. So we're going to see probably today what the medical report comes out with. But I didn't like the way that looked. But they were looking for him finally. You know, a lot of us been calling for that. He had 11 shots by that time. And I feel like he would have got up into the 15 shot range, you know, by the end of the game. But that's that. The second adjustment. So, so, so now Julius is looking for IQ. Then the first adjustment that Atlanta made in having the John Day Murray guard Brunson. After a while, they started trying to switch off Brunson. Bad news. And, and Brunson went to the hole. Now, here's another adjustment. Prior, and if you've been watching Randall for the previous seasons, and if you've been watching him as I have trying to be objective about it, because I've been negative on Randall, but when it's positive, you got to be positive, right? Some people just negative to be negative, and I don't need to talk to y'all. But Randall started cutting to the basket. He was moving without the ball. Key play down the stretch. Brunson gets to the hole. Atlanta covers the hole, you know, guards the basket, guards the rim. And out of nowhere, here comes Randall cutting down the lane. This is the type of thing. Okay. 
going forward that's going to make the Knicks very difficult. Okay, no RJ, no RJ. Okay, again, but and now it didn't even have Grimes, but then Quick stepped up. Randall started making adjustments. Brunson started making adjustments. This is key because as they can continue to do this, they're going to be very difficult to beat going forward. They are. Um, I can see this becoming something bigger, you know, later on. As I said, give them the 20 games, they're going to be good. Okay. Um, right now, in terms of defense, opponents, points per game, the Knicks are number one in the NBA. In terms of differential, the Knicks are third in the East. And generally, the differential is how the standings end up become. They, they, they very closely follow the differential. There are some, like I can say, about 80%. Um, if you're looking at the differential, you're going to find that's going to be your, uh, your 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 standings in the East. And so right now, the Knicks are third in the East in differential. OK, they're six, you know, tied for six with like three or four other teams right now in the standings. But it's still early. But the differential is going to help you. Now, the other night, did you see my boy Obi? Did y'all see him? Now, I don't want to hear all your haters about they shouldn't have traded him. They should have traded him. He wasn't going to start for the Knicks because we got Juju. But he starts for the Pacers. He had, I think it was 26 or 27 the other night. Him and Halliburton starting to click. And Indiana's freaking 7 and 4. Okay? Third in the East. I don't think that's going to last. But I think they can be a playoff team. Halliburton's the real deal, as most of us understand. And a lot of us wanted him in that draft that we drafted, Obi. I did. I wanted Devin Vassell, number one, and Halliburton, number two. That's Those are the guys I wanted above Obi. But... Halliburton's that guy. And you got a guy that runs the floor like Obi. I told y'all he could get 20 a game. I'm still calling that. I know he started off slow. It's a new system, new team. Him now being a starting power forward in the league, he needed to get used to all that. He still does. I'm telling you, though, he's going to get 20 a game. Okay? I, I was glad to see it. He's not with the Knicks no more. Yeah, we're competing against him. But Obi's still my boy. He's always going to be my boy. He's from New York. I like him. Okay, so I'm glad for him. And you know what? I want to see what kind of contract he signs with Indiana. I know they're going to want to lock him up. I know they're going to want to lock him up. But if we can get him back in two or three seasons, I'm all in. So let's see what happens. But that aside, the adjustments that the Knicks made, that Tibbs made, that Randall made, that Brunson made, and then, of course, the growth of RJ and even just as important, Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson was a monster last night. And he seems, just as I mentioned, that Jonte Murray is kryptonite for Brunson. Of course, Brunson busted that yoke last night. Mitchell Robinson is kryptonite for Capella. Capella is a is something else, but he can't deal with Mitch Robinson. Okay, and I never thought he could. The offensive rebounding. I mean, last night, when you look at the offensive rebounding from this game last night, this is where one of the areas where the ball game was decided. Um, uh, Mitch Robb is really just overwhelming the NBA right now on the offensive glass. He really is just too much. Last night he had 15 boards, but six on the offensive and three steals. And he's been stealing the basketball like legit thief. He's taking it from people and a block. Um, and, you know, the thing is, you remember when he was a rookie? Remember his second year? Last night, zero. Zero personal fouls. Mitch Robb played 31 minutes. Zero personal fouls last night. I'm excited for what I'm seeing with game within the game. The Knicks look like, this is where the continuity I mentioned yesterday comes in. This is where the continuity comes in. They know each other. They're all growing as ball players under Tom Thibodeau. Here, you got Randall recognizing where his teammate has a fish and getting the ball to his teammate. You have Randall cutting to the basket. You have Randall playing defense. That's huge. You have RJ taking the step that all of us wanted him to take, but we didn't know when it was going to happen, whether it's this year or two years from now when he's 25, he's 23. It's happened. Okay. You got the leader now in Brunson. Grimes, they just started looking for him last night. I was excited to see that. Um, he shot almost 40% from three. Again, he's been shooting 40% from three this, this season. I'm hoping his left hand is not you know, keeping them out too long. Not that the Knicks could not overcome it. Like I said, quick, Brooks busted back out last night. 
So we'll see what happens. I'm hoping RJ returns uh, for the Friday game against Washington. It's going to be a huge game because of the now we're starting to get into the season. If the Knicks win that game, they would have won five or their last six. They would be seven and five. And so we got to get this, you know, we, we need to get this win. The Saturday night game against Charlotte is going to be tough because it is, again, the second half of a back-to-back. -back. So I'm hoping that we can get RJ back for these two games to help pick up the slack. Fortunately for Atlanta, you know, um, the, the Leprechaun was out on Tuesday game against Detroit, which they happened to win. Then they brought him back for the Knicks. Smart move. And, of course, the Leprechaun was tough. But, you know, he had the Leprechaun had 17 assists. But he was 4 of 12. And y'all know why. He caught the Q-Dog card. That was his problem. He caught the Q-Dog card. 4 of 12. Yeah. And so <laughs> he wasn't doing his normal thing. But anyway, so I'm hoping Q-Dog comes back. If not, you're probably going to see if RJ's back, you're going to see Josh Hart start at the 2. You know, that's, you know, Tom Terrell got another grandson. Okay, side from IQ. It's Josh Hart. You know, he got, he got kids now. He got, he got IQ. He got Josh Hart, and of course we know we know we know Brunson is one of his sons. Him and him and him and uh, him and his father. <laughs> That's fam right there. So you're gonna probably see Hart start at the two guard. You know because and again, all y'all still whining about height need to stop. Y'all really need to stop. Last night the Knicks had 42 boards, third to 30 for Atlanta. They licked that 14 offensive rebounds to six for Atlanta. Uh, Josh Hart had eight. I believe he had eight. Yes, he had eight rebounds last night, including two offensive. Can y'all stop whining, please? He can guard fours. He can rebound the basketball. The Knicks are not lacking height. We're in good shape. So I like I like the way that looked last night. This was big, bigger than just the two-point win, which was big enough. This was bigger than that. So DiVincenzo didn't have his greatest game. It was him that turned that ball over 4.0 seconds left. We're going to have to fix that, but I'm sure they will. So going into Friday, we'll talk about that game against Washington. We got to take this game seriously. Washington only got two wins. That don't mean nothing. We need this W in Washington. And, and then we can move up in these standings. The Knicks are actually a game behind the third seed right now. Um, they're tied for the sixth seed. One, two, three, four teams, including the Brooklyn, Atlanta, Orlando, all six and five. Uh, the Knicks are a game behind uh, the, th the third seed is a three-way tie between Indiana, Miami, and, and Milwaukee. And then the second seed and the first seed, of course, Boston and Philly. So the Knicks can, can, this is, we can start doing some work now. We need this win Friday. Great win last night. Like I said, not just for the win's sake, but the game within the game was was tight. Uh, and I'm liking what I'm seeing from Julius Randle. It, it seemed like the commentator was saying that, well, the ball stopped moving. They stopped moving the ball. It's not that. What y'all need to understand is that teams make adjustments. This is the league. And so when you see them doing something, it's moving smoothly, and then all of a sudden it's not, that's because the other team made an adjustment. Teams that are really good. And Atlanta, I got to give them their props. They're good. But they take away things. Okay? That's what the Knicks do. They'll leave some things for you and take away things. And so that's why it looks like, well, maybe they're moving. Then they're not moving. No. It's adjustments. And that was beautiful last night on both sides. So let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Y'all enjoy your Thursday. Let's keep this going. Shalom.